talk a little bit specifically about how we can, as a church family, uh, pray for Afghanistan. Not really just, we don't pray for the generic Afghanistan, but we're going to kind of maybe highlight a couple specific groups of people that we as believers can pray for as we kind of see uh, this unfold before our eyes, right? Um, and so as someone who has, has spent 13 years in the Marine Corps, a Marine Corps infantry officer, and I spent majority of 2010 in Afghanistan deployed um, with my Marines. And so um, so we're going to, so it's it's a little bit, you know, both in Iraq and Afghanistan, it's, un- it's kind of weird to watch things unfold on TV in places that you that you were with people that you cared about. Um, but as we kind of, I'm sure all of you are watching the situation and we hear some, uh, we see the pictures, we see the videos, and if you scroll kind of deep into Twitter and you kind of follow some of the local Afghans, you see some pretty horrific videos and horrific pictures, and uh, we won't really necessarily talk a lot about those now because... <laughs> We haven't sent the kids over to Kid Central yet, but uh, um, I think there's four kind of people that we want to pray for this morning, okay? So first, we want to pray for the local Afghani people, okay? So we all kind of know, we see the pictures of what they're doing at the airport. We see the people, we think about the people who can't even get to the airport. Uh, we think of um, the Taliban and the stuff that they do um, to people who have been aligned with the U.S. government and even people who just don't adhere to their brand of Sharia Islamic law. Um, and so we want to pray for them because they're really, there is a, they are really in a deep sense of danger and they are really at the, um, at danger of being, um, killed and also having their kid, their daughters forcibly married off and all the, really pretty much anything you can think of that's the worst thing that could happen to you or your family, they are, uh, in danger of that. And then there's this kind of a specific group in that, in that there's a, there's a group of Afghans who are, Jesus-loving Christians, and if you read a story, there's a story about a local Afghan, the, a group of Afghan Christians, and they, they prayed and thought about whether or not they were going to formally register with the government to say, hey, we are Christians, and this is our Christian church, and they finally came to that conclusion. They prayerfully did it, and they did that in July, All right? They did that in July with the, the reigning Islam or the, the reigning Republic of Afghanistan. And a month later, they're now on a registry for the Taliban to go find, right? And so you read about their faith and how incredible it is and how they trust the sovereignty of God. And, um, but right, so there's local Afghans who are in really desperate need of prayer and help. Um, then there's also the local church, the, 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 of the big C church there who are faced with some really real persecution. Another group we can think of as we pray for is um, here kind of locally is, um, is the veterans and the people who have spent time. I mean, not only military veterans, but lots of civilian contractors stuff have spent time in Afghanistan working alongside those people. And um, I can tell you, really, one of the primary uh, emotions that is elicited is really kind of just rage and anger. Um, and so, and just a really deep sense of helpless, hopelessness and and fecklessness like what am i doing like you spend all that time like, they're just a lot of times it's like hey just give me a gun i'll go i'll go i'll go back right and so a lot of guys a lot of people who have seen their friends you know be buried in the ground because of the, the work they did and to see the question then becomes well what was it all for very real things going on in the in the lives of our veterans and, and people who have spent time over there investing um a lot of a lot of people some people investing their entire lives right i did a i knocked on the door of Sergeant Frank World's family and said, told his wife, saw his two kids playing in the background, that his, their dad had been killed, right? So what are they thinking? Um, we also want to specifically pray, another group, we want, we want to pray for President Biden. We want to pray for all of the, the national leaders who are, have influence and input into what is going on. Um, we pr- probably could poll everybody in here and probably some strong political opinions, but um, primarily we don't necessarily care about those right now. We want to pray. Jesus calls us to pray for our leaders, whether you agree with them or not, whether you agree with the way it was handled or not. It doesn't matter. Our job is to pray for them and pray that they are, they're, they're leading with wisdom. Um, pray that they can, we can all, both sides of the aisle, prioritize the people that need prioritization and kind of put the politics to the side. So we want to pray for them. And then the last one is probably the most difficult to pray for, but we want to and we will pray for the Taliban themselves. You know, when Jesus says, pray for your enemies, 
He's not talking about the people at work that you go with who are kind of slandering you, who kind of make fun of you, or they don't really like you. He's talking about the people who are very much like the Taliban in Jesus' day, the Roman regime, and the people who are subjugating his friends and his family and his people to the same type of things that the Taliban is doing to the people there. So he's talking about pray for your enemies. Pray for the least lovable people I think I could maybe think of in the world at the at present time, right? The Taliban, because they are deeply in need of Jesus. And so it's easy to kind of look across the, the ocean and say, can you believe those people? But again, we realize how much grace we've been given to be born where we're born, to be provided with an opportunity to respond to the gospel, to even know about who Jesus is. And so we're going to pray for the Taliban as well and their leadership and that God, we believe the Holy Spirit can work in those circumstances and the gospel can advance regardless of what's going on and the, the environment there. So we're going to pray. We're not going to, we're going to spend a little bit of time in prayer. Would you, I mean, would you mind standing with us so we can kind of actively participate in our prayer? Um, and as you go throughout your, your day and your week, just pray for these groups of people. Um, and really, one of the things we can do is be a light in this world and say we're going to actively pray when you feel like I can't do anything. Well, what we can do is, is pretty important. That's pray. So let's do that together this morning. Heavenly Father, we worship you this morning. We recognize that you are the creator, you're the sustainer of the universe, and when we think of situations like are going on in Afghanistan, we sometimes feel a little bit hard to rest in your sovereignty and the fact that you orchestrate all things, you bring governments up, you raise them up, you bring them down all for your glory. And so this morning, Heavenly Father, we, we just approach you with humility, saying that we trust you, we trust in your sovereignty, but also, Lord, we approach you with, with confidence because we know that as followers of Jesus, as adopted members of our family, we are allowed to approach you with confidence, making our requests known to you. And we do that this morning, and we pray for the situation in Afghanistan. We pray for the people of Afghanistan who are in desperate need of rescue and help, who are the most vulnerable, who are in the sights of a group of people who want to do them deep, deep harm, deep, deep persecution to the point of death. And we pray that you do a miracle and you do a lot of small little miracles in these people's lives to help them get to safety. We pray for the local Afghan church. We pray that you would strengthen them this morning, strengthen their, their faith in the face of what many are describing as immediate death. We pray for the veterans who are in this country and all around the world who have spent time there, who have invested time, who have seen friends and colleagues who both paid the ultimate sacrifice and also have been wearing the scars both mentally, emotionally, physically for years. And we pray for their hearts this morning that you would comfort them and that through this, that as they look for answers, that you would be the answer that they find. We pray for our leadership. We pray specifically for President Biden. We pray for all the leaders who are involved in the decision-making not only in the United States, but in leadership around the world who are making plans and executing strategies to help bring some measure of rescue to those people. We pray for wisdom. We pray that you would humble them to the point where they prioritize the people that need prioritize and, and minimize their politicking and their own power, and that we would reflect your character as caring for the least of these. And lastly, Heavenly Father, we pray for our enemies. We pray for the Taliban, each and every individual member of the Taliban. We pray that in the midst of their distorted Islamic ideology of Sharia law, we pray that, Holy Spirit, you would 
show up, that you would do miracles in their lives. You would show up in, in their dreams. You would show up in ways that they couldn't even think or imagine well beyond any way that we can possibly fathom to reach those people. We pray that you would do it. We know that as we stand here, we humbly recognize that you care more about each and every individual in these situations than we ever could. And you love them and you've uniquely created every single one of these people. And we trust you this morning. We put it all in your hands and we trust you. And you say we are entirely dependent on you. So this morning, Lord, as we think about how big you are and we kind of get a picture of how small we are and how incapable we are of fixing all of our problems, we declare our reliance on you. We pray that you would be glorified in this situation, that you would intervene in this situation, and that your name would be made famous somehow in this situation. We pray all these things in your name. Amen.